In 2015, the very first gravitational wave was detected by LIGO and Virgo. After the detection of gravitational waves, a new window has opened for the scientists to look into the universe. But what are gravitational waves and how are they detected? Let's find out. Gravitational waves are the last prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity. According to it, mass warps the fabric of 4D space-time, leading to what we see as gravitational motion. Now, it turns out that general relativity makes predictions far beyond the familiar concept of gravity. It includes the deflection of light known as gravitational lensing, there's the slowing of time in gravitational fields, and the dragging of space-time by spinning masses. All of the predictions have been proved experimentally. However, the last and the most amazing prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity was gravitational waves. The idea of gravity not as a force but as warped space-time is often depicted in analogy as a flexible rubber sheet being depressed by a heavy ball. Now this isn't entirely appropriate as our universe has three special dimensions. However, the analogy can give us a sense of what a gravitational wave really is. If you drop a ball onto a rubber sheet, a dip is formed. It causes other objects to move differently along the sheet, analogous to gravity. Now if the ball is moved around, ripples are created, similar to the ripples created in pond. Same goes for the gravitational waves. Accelerated mass in space produce gravitational ripples, an outflowing fluctuation of expanding and contracting space-time. So what exactly creates the gravitational waves? The answer is, we have to change the quadruple moment of mass distribution. This means, any distribution that is not a spherically or cylindrically symmetric. So rotating a sphere or a cylinder will not create gravitational waves, but two objects orbiting each other or an asymmetrically spinning or exploding thing does. Now, just as the ripples in a rubber sheet propagate at a certain speed determined by the stiffness of the rubber, gravitational waves and indeed gravity itself propagate according to the stiffness of space-time, in other words, at the speed of light. The speed limit comes from the fact that the speed of light is built into Einstein's field equation, which is necessary for it to be invariant to the Lorentz transformation. It's worth pointing out that this speed limit is really the speed of causality, the speed at which space-time interacts. And all massless things, including gravitational waves and light, must travel at that speed. So what do gravitational waves even look like? Unlike ripples on a pond or even electromagnetic waves, which are all simple up-down waves, gravitational waves are what we call quadruple waves. They propagate as a fluctuation of squeezed and stretched space in a sort of cross-like pattern. If one passes through our body, we will become taller and thinner, then shorter and fatter, then taller and thinner, etc. until it passes by. But how much will we be stretched? Well, let's think about all sorts of things that might produce detectable gravitational waves. Insane cosmological phenomena like neutron stars or black holes in spiraling just before merger, or gravitational catastrophes like supernova explosions or collisions between giant black holes make gravitational waves that lengthen or contract our space here on Earth by a factor of 10 to the power minus 21 or even less that changes our height by less than a millionth of the width of a proton. And this change is for the most powerful waves that have likely ever passed through us. Now, this power depends on how far away our catastrophic gravitational event is, but these things are far because they are incredibly rare. Any gravitational wave that we are likely to spot is going to come from a distant galaxy hundreds of millions of light years away. Spotting this is a very difficult experiment. In 1993, Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Russell A. Hulse and Joseph H. Taylor Jr. due to their indirect detection of gravitational waves. If two massive objects orbit each other close enough to produce a lot of gravitational radiation, their orbits will lose energy and decay, causing them to spiral in towards each other. This has been seen in binary neutron stars, and the results agreed exactly with the rates of gravitational radiation predicted by general relativity. But the direct detection of gravitational waves helps us to study black holes, neutron stars, even the extremely early universe in ways never before possible. 
But how do we detect a hundred billion billionth of a difference in length? The answer is a giant Michelson interferometer. Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, also known as LIGO detector, consists of two arms, each 4 km long, comprising 1.2 m wide steel vacuum tubes arranged in an L shape. A laser beam is sent towards a partially reflecting mirror and split along two paths. The beams travel along the 4 km arms and reflect back towards the central mirror which recombines them directing their light to a detector. The beams bounce off mirrors back and forth 400 times before coming back together. Now if we get the length of those paths just right, we can make the peaks of one of those electromagnetic waves line up with the valleys of the other causing them to completely cancel out. It is known as destructive interference. So no signal is seen. But if a gravitational wave passes by, it will shrink one of those paths and lengthen the other, and then vice versa, oscillating with time. The returning beam won't cancel out perfectly, and we will get these little blips of signal. Incredibly tiny stretching and squeezing of space can actually be measured directly in this way. To have an idea about the size of distortion, let's zoom into a hydrogen atom until we reach the proton at its core. LIGO is so sensitive that it can measure changes in distance as tiny as a thousand of the diameter of a proton. Although the sensitivity is amazing, it is undeniable that anything can cause such tiny changes in path lengths like extremely weak seismic activity, a car driving miles away, a bird flying nearby. Even quantum fluctuations in the photon can cause noise. So how do we tell that it's a gravitational wave? Well, a gravitational wave leaves a very distinct signature, first contracting one arm while stretching the other and then oscillating over time. It's even possible to get a direction for the wave by measuring the relative path lengths. But to be extra sure, the detections are done in multiple sites and there are two LIGO sites one in Washington and one in Louisiana, plus a collaborative faculty, Virgo, in Italy. The first direct observation of gravitational waves was made on 14 September 2015 and was announced by the LIGO and Virgo collaborations on 11 February 2016. The waveform detected by both LIGO observatories matched the predictions of general relativity for a gravitational wave emanating from the inward spiral and merger of a pair of black holes of around 36 and 29 solar masses and their subsequent ring down of the single resulting black hole. It was also the first observation of a binary black hole merger demonstrating both the existence of binary stellar mass black hole systems and the fact that such mergers could occur within the current age of our universe. Now LIGO is sensitive to gravitational waves at frequencies produced by merging black holes and neutron stars as well as the formation of neutron stars and supernova explosions. It is potentially able to detect even the actual spin of neutron stars. However, now that we know that these things are detectable, it opens up an entirely new spectrum for observing the universe. The upcoming evolved Laser Interferometer Space Antenna or LISA will see an entirely different part of this spectrum, much lower frequencies opening the possibility to observe completely new phenomena. It will see the slow ringing of binary white dwarf stars in our own galaxy as well as the final dance of pairs of truly gigantic supermassive black holes just before they merge in the course of galaxies. This is really a big deal and it marks the beginning of the era of gravitational wave astronomy. It's a new window on the universe that will reveal phenomena and physics that we have never expected. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share this video and to see such videos in future, do subscribe.